Apple today announced a second generation HomePod to replace the original full-size HomePod with improved smart home features. The new HomePod will feature built-in sensors that can be used in HomeKit, along with matter and thread support. But remember back when it was discovered that the HomePod Mini had temperature and humidity sensors? Well, Apple confirmed that these sensors are getting activated in areas what they look like in HomeKit, and this is what you can do with them. Now, in order to use this, you need, first of all, a HomePod Mini, or when the new HomePod comes out, the second generation bigger version. You also need to be running iOS 16.3 on all of your devices for this to work. Within the Ohm app, they're exposed like any other temperature and humidity sensor. In the main section of the app, if you tap on the climate view and then tap on temperature, you can see the readings that have been registered for the temperature sensor. You also do the same for the humidity sensor and see the readings by clicking on the humidity section. Then in the room that the Mini is assigned to, you'll see the sensor readings along the top of the room view. This can give you a snapshot of the environment in that room and take any action that you need to do. Tapping on the temperature icon brings up the HomePod settings, but now you have options for accessories. Tapping on this brings up the settings for both sensors. Although it's worth pointing out that the settings are limited to renaming the device, adding an automation and turning on if the device appears in the home summary. You can also change the room, but please note by doing this moves the entire HomePod into that room, which is to be expected, but it was worth pointing that out. Interestingly, if you tap on the humidity sensor directly in the room view, it takes you straight to the sensor rather than the HomePod settings as you would with the temperature sensor. While it's nice to see what the temperature and humidity is in your home, it's with automations with these types of sensors you get the best out of them. So for instance, you can include them in an automation to control an accessory in your home. So if you're like me, you have smart blinds, you can set up an automation to close the blinds if the temperature in that room would go above a certain level. So in my case, I want my kitchen blinds to close if the temperature goes above 20 degrees. This is because the kitchen is south facing and gets sun most of the day. So especially in the summer, this room can get really hot. So using the blinds to control the temperature is something I do anyway. So I would create an automation in the same way as I would any other HomeKit accessory. First, I would tap on the plus icon, then add automation. Then choose when a sensor detects something. You can then scroll down to the HomePod sensor you desire and set up the automation to work with whichever accessory you choose to do. So in my view, automations are gonna be really good to be used with the HomePod, particularly if you've got it in many rooms just like I have. However, one of the interesting things I've seen at the moment on Twitter since this has been announced is questions have been raised if this is the death of sensors from other manufacturers. And my opinion is a no with some caveats. If you're like me and have a HomePod Mini in most rooms in your home, then technically it could be. However, if you have not, then I don't think you're likely to buy a HomePod Mini just for its sensor features. You want to buy it for all the other things that this device brings. So the cheaper alternative is a dedicated sensor. So the other reason why it's a still a no from me, Apple have stated that sensors inside can become unreliable when the HomePod has been playing for a long time or at higher volumes. So in my view, having a dedicated sensor, if you require reliable readings, is the only way to go. Now it is great to see that Apple are including and activating these sensors in the HomePods. It's gonna give people more choice around what they want to do with the device, and particularly if they want to automate some of the accessories in that room. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the short video. It's giving you an overview of what to expect from the sensors. And I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what the new HomePod has to offer. So if you've liked this video, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could give me a thumbs up. And also check out the rest of the channel where we have more HomeKit content. And if you like what you see, then it'd be greatly again appreciated if you could subscribe to the channel. You can also check us out on our social media channels at Follow HomeKit on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.